Hi, I'm El Gavalo Virta, and I'm going to show you how you can record your DAW with Mac the most easiest way. I've thought about this with this problem on this thing like so many times, so long. I've tried using audio movers, OBS, black hole, and sometimes they worked, sometimes they didn't, sometimes many times after few minutes, sometimes two minutes, five minutes, eight minutes, the audio started to just go like trashy and it just didn't work and I needed to have aggregate devices and multi-outputs and whatnot and it effed up my system because you know I, I do a produce band record mix here I want everything to be exactly the same every time I don't need to I don't need any more gray hairs <laughs> okay let me let me let me show you I figured this out actually just a, not that long ago because I've been doing screen recordings and every time at some point the audio just didn't work I needed to start again or edit or you know, film a bit like five minutes, then five minutes, then fuck that. Okay, so this isn't free, but many times quality costs, but believe me, you invest a little bit, makes your life so much easier, at least it has made my mine. So Rogue Amoebas, Rogue Amoeba, Ebas Loopback. It's a free download, you can try this out, uh, but it adds those Glitches, you know, it, it works like many of those others in my experience, the free download. But if you purchase it, you know, it just works. It, it's 107 USD at the moment. One time in, in investment and then, you know, it just works. You download that. I'm not going to show you that. Everybody probably knows how to download stuff and, you know, put it to your, your computer. But here it is. I'll put the address in the description below. This just, in my experience, this just works. <laughs> okay, let's put this down. Then, when you have installed the loopback, this is kind of the loopback the application. So, you create a new virtual device, like this. I'm gonna take that off now so I don't F up my system. Hopefully I didn't F it up now. And then you can choose the application you want to record. In my case, it's Logic. So it records Logic's output. Especially as guitar players, when we, you know, if you do demos, YouTube demos for plugins, it's because we don't want to record the incoming signal to our audio interface. We want to record the output, you know, the plugins, whatever effects like. <laughs> this is Softube's amp room now, and it's the output, not the not the input. This is something I struggle. And as you can see on the screen. <laughs> So this is the way I did it, and it works. Logic Pro, output channels, then I'm monitoring myself via the audio interface, like normally. I don't need to change anything, okay? So this is this. Is this. Cool. And then I don't need to change anything from here. My output is a virtual output, because I, I use uh, Sonarworks Sound ID reference. We get into that. Soon, how, how you you don't you can't use this when you're screen recording. Otherwise, this calibration will be recorded. My input is like it, it's always the audio interface. Again, no aggregate devices, multi outputs, whatnots. So cool, this works. Then again, and the, the MIDI MIDI audio so audio MIDI setup. There's nothing, you know like extra. Microphone, speakers, it's a sound ID reference, the virtual output, the calibration, then my audio interface, this is just, it's related to that, I don't know what it is. And then the loopback logic, what I, I, cre I have created, it, it appears here also. Great. Then 
when you record, you know, you use QuickTime like this. Now I can't choose the new screen recording because I'm recording, but I have a picture here. So you choose options and loopback logic. Don't choose your audio interface. In my case, the Steinberg Thunderbolt uh, AFSR 4G. Otherwise, it will also record the incoming signal. It doesn't matter if you're using real amps, so the sound is there when it before it goes to the interface. But if you're demoing plugins, then if you choose this, it will record the clean DI sound also. We we don't want that. We don't we want to hear the 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 plugin. So when you choose this loopback logic, then it only records what comes out from your DAW, not what goes in. Capish, good. Now I'm recording. Now I have the amp room here. <laughs> Cool. And then if I want to record a reel with a real gear. Now I have channel here. I choose. And now it's a real JZMA 900, real bus SD1, real Marshall cabinet mic. And the, then real microphone preamp. And <laughs> And since it records the output, if I add, let's say, delay, it records the delay, the, the output. Like I said, the sound ID reference, the only minus is that I can't use this. Because this is calibrated to my room. And now this without the low end is a bit bo 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 boomy. But uh, before I do this, I just play a little bit, listen to music without, so I get a little bit used to it. Because if I put this on, this calibration, as you can see, now it's really flat. There's quite a bit of a bump here in, in, in my, my room. So I have a subwoofer so on the low end. So everything feels a lot more bass heavy than it is. But it will sound weird to you because now it's calibrated to my room. But now here, to me, this sounds like, yes, what I'm used to. Because I always use this. Uh, no matter if I'm recording, mixing, uh, just listening to music, I have the calibration always on because it's a completely flat frequency response. But to you there, it will probably sound quite thin and really weird because it's my room calibration. When I take it out, Now it sounds probably normal to you again. So this is the only kind of downside to it. With audio movers, listen to send and receiver. I, I use that sometimes, or actually when always when I do Skype lessons, guitar lessons, mixing mixing lessons, so the student can hear, you know, what happens on my screen when I'm showing showing things. But there is some that certain it drops out every now, now and then and i don't want to have that when i'm screen recording uh, doing a youtube video tutorial so i just bypass this and it's fine and let's say if i would have the whole mix here it records that because it records the output from my light from logic not the input from the audio interface but the output from logic and if you're experiencing latency, like what usually happens if you have a big session now, there isn't anything else. But if I would have a full mix here and I want to capture that and record on top of that with Logic, there's this uh, direct input monitoring, which bypasses, you know, all the plugins that are, are creating latency. Well, I don't have anything, doesn't bypass anything here. <laughs> And it still works. It doesn't capture the input. If I take the plugin, it 
And no matter if this is on, it again only captures the output from logic. So this is the way I have found is the easiest way to do it. I don't need to change anything. I don't need to create any multi output aggregate, whatever design devices. Everything is just like it is, just like it has been with me. I only, the only thing I need, you need, is the loop bag audio, which goes around 100 bucks. And then when you record, you just choose from the options and that you record the loopback logic output. Press record, that's it. Hopefully you found this interesting and informative because myself, I would have wished that someone had done this video, but at least I couldn't find found one. So I just figured this out by myself. You're welcome. <laughs> hey, all the best. See you on the next one. Bye.